Oh, that's cool. Warner Brothers released a teaser trailer for Godzilla vs. Kong. Oh. Funko released a tease of their Godzilla vs. Kong pops. Ah! Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on this video. My name is Chris. We've got a lot of movie news to dive in here today. And I know, don't be panicking. Old set's not gone. You guys know this is just kind of a switcheroo every now and then. I'm right here because later today I'm going to be interviewing the creator of Willy's Wonderland, Geo Parsons. And talking to him about his movie. Even asking him the question... Did you rip off FNAF? Oh yeah, I'm gonna go there. You think I won't? But if you do have any Willy's Wonderland questions you want me to ask him, go ahead and leave them down below. I'll be sure to bring him up. He's a real nice guy, so I'm sure he'll be okay with anything I ask him about his Willy. We're getting on to the movie news we're gonna discuss here today. We got some Godzilla vs. Kong to talk about, because there, what is going on with this movie? Two months away and still not a hopefully today, Tuesday, we got something, but as of me recording this so far, zip. We're also gonna be touching around Ghostbusters. They released a new photo, what seems to be the new suits for the Ghostbusters. And of course, more Spider-Man photos feel like J. Jonah Jameson in this bit. I just want them Spider-Man photos! So be sure you guys leave me your thoughts on everything we discuss here today and hitting that like button just to show me a little love. I suggest Jumping right into it, it was just reported that Matt Damon, who made a small cameo role in Thor 3 entitled Thor Ragnarok, who showed up as an actor on Asgard playing Loki, is gonna show up one more time in Thor Love and Thunder. Now Matt Damon, I think, is a really up there actor, and when someone like him steps into the MCU, it's a big deal, but fans are really wondering, is he gonna have another small funny cameo role like he did in Thor 3, or is it something bigger? My thoughts really is, whatever it is, Matt Damon gonna get killed in this movie. I've been saying this for a while, but it's really my thoughts and theories on what's going on with Thor 4 and with the villain involved. Don't forget, we have Christian Bale, who is now confirmed to be the villain, is playing Gore the God Butcher, okay? And you don't get the name the God Butcher for just sitting on your butt. No, I'm thinking they're gonna make sure Christian's Bell character lives up to that name, and they're gonna be bringing in as many gods as they can that are now currently living on Norway on Earth, because that's what happened in Avengers Endgame, and a lot of these gods are gonna be butchered. And I think that's exactly why they brought Matt Damon's character. He most likely will be playing a longer version role of his character, and it's gonna end with him getting butchered. Now, I could be absolutely wrong with that, and they could not be doing that at all. Heck, they could be giving Matt Damon a whole brand new role, a brand new character. I wouldn't be surprised there, but I would think they'd stick with the continuity of what they have set up already and just kind of flesh out his character a little more. I mean, even along with that, the Thor forecast is getting even bigger because it was also just confirmed that Nebula will be part of it. So not only do we have Chris Hemsworth as Thor, we have Tessa Thompson coming back as Valkyrie, we have Nebula coming in, we have Chris Pratt as Star-Lord coming in. Really, it seems like it's going to be a great time here, but how do you guys think Matt Damon's character will be used in Thor 4? Or do you think he's getting butchered or do you think he'll be playing Beta Ray Bill as some people are theorizing? Moving on from there, let's talk a little bit about Godzilla vs. Kong because let me tell you, ooh, if my hairy cheeks were out, I'd be pounding them hard because I am just like, what the hell are you doing, Warner Brothers? Yesterday, in the middle of the day, y'all might have seen, there was supposedly a Godzilla vs. Kong teaser trailer that came out. Now, I fell for it. I got duped. Turns out it was just a fan-made thing where they meshed together all the past seconds of footage that we've gotten so far, which has totaled up to six seconds worth of footage, even though this movie is coming close to three to four years old in the making. But we were hit with that surprise that Godzilla vs. Kong, instead of being released in May of 2021, will now release in March. And that's kind of awesome, because in a year of getting movies delayed and delayed and delayed, it's kind of nice to know when it's like, oh, we're moving it up and it's coming soon, but it's like... This is a huge movie. It's an event film. It's something that I think would have packed theaters had the pandemic never been a thing. And you still are being stingy with posters, trailers. Like, usually movies need three to six months minimum to market their films to the public to make them aware that it's coming and really be like, you guys need to check this out. Don't forget, this film is still coming to theaters, but it's also going on HBO Max the exact same day. Curious to know which way you guys are going to see it, but it's also just so puzzling to me that they had the audacity to move it up because last we heard also they were going through a legal battle where Legendary, who financed 75% of this movie, was pissed that it was going to go to HBO Max because they had no say in that matter and they spent most of the money to make this film. With the release date moving up, it looks like they resolved that. But is that also the reason the movie got moved up? Did Warner Brothers take out a huge bank loan to pay Legendary? And it's like, yo, we better start releasing this movie before we get even more interest. And that's why it's coming out in March. So maybe they don't even care if this movie tanks. They are hoping they can follow the Netflix model 
model where Netflix does not market a movie at all other than their Twitter and YouTube channel and somehow their movies still end up getting millions and millions of views. So my question is, I just really wanted to throw it off to you guys. Do you think there's going to be enough people who get informed from now all the way to March to make Godzilla vs. Kong a success? Do you think this will be a film that might earn more money than Wonder Woman did in its run that so far has made about $140 million worldwide? Do you think Godzilla vs. Kong could beat that now that we're living in a world that people are starting to return to theaters? Moving on to the paranormal, we got to talk about some Ghostbusters Afterlife. So looking forward to this movie. And it looks like marketing on this thing could start ramping up and Sony is finally willing to try and take a bullet in this world where people are barely showing up to the movies. Don't forget, Sony was one of the first studios that said, we are not releasing our movies until theaters can be packed. And the reason I say that is because Empire Magazine went ahead and released a first look photo of Ghostbusters Afterlife with some of our new Ghostbusters. We have here Finn Wolfhard, Logan Kim, and McKenna Grace all inside the Ecto-1. And something you could also notice is these guys are wearing something that heavily resembles some Ghostbusters outfits. This could be our first look right here to the new team outfits. I highly doubt they're actually wearing the same Ghostbusters outfits that were in the little trailer they released. They're just collecting dust there, but with the two in the back being kids, I don't think they'd fit in them very well. Jason Reitman also went ahead and released a little statement about the movie. He said exactly, the feeling that I've kind of held on to is that while it's very funny, it's really scared me. It was really my first experience with a horror film. I was at the Director's Guild meeting and I happened to be sitting next to Steven Spielberg. When I told him I was working on Ghostbusters, he out of nowhere said library ghosts top 10 scares of all time and it's true i don't know about you but having the director refer to this new ghostbusters movie as a horror film man that is exciting right there because although we know this thing might not really scare us or give us nightmares the fact that he's going in with that mentality of this is a horror film first and a comedy second which i think is always what the ghostbusters movies kind of were and is sort of where the 2016 ghostbusters movie fell where it was comedy first and then something else second. To me, this is just kind of reassuring that this movie will actually come out this year because it's set for a summer 2021 release date. And with the first look already approved and shot out, maybe if another trailer or some sort of teaser is on the horizon in a couple of weeks. How do you guys feel about this first look of Ghostbusters Afterlife? And what are your thoughts on this movie? Are you hyped for it or did you forget it was even coming out? But all right, muchachas and muchachos here, we have some Spider-Man 3 set photos. And boy, let me tell you, the Spider-Man content is what is driving me through this year because it is some fantastic stuff we have set photos coming out almost every day i did do a couple of videos already touching upon the new suit upgrades where they tweaked the far from home suit and made it different you guys can check out that video but now some photos that were released ever since i made that video is we have a couple of flyers in the city of new york that raises a lot of questions so started off with some photos that i didn't get to talk about last time is we have some snowy pictures of tom holland i like this from what i'm being told it looks like tom holland is going into this bakery shop that we now know Zendaya's character MJ is working at and he was holding a paper so he was practicing some sort of speech to give her and MJ was happy to see him at first but the scene ends with MJ upset and Peter kind of storming out so who knows if there's trouble in paradise there if what happens throughout this movie that they break up or that they have to try again that's really puzzling to me but the also thing to note here is Peter Parker is just walking casually the streets of New York so whatever trouble Peter was in as being accused as the murderer who killed Mysterio he seems to have worked it out to where he can freely walk the streets, so that's good. But until he becomes a free man, these flyers that we're getting at and this board right here that someone managed to video on the set of Spider-Man 3, one, we have here a Mysterio poster that reads, I believe. And this is definitely a reference to people in New York believing that Spider-Man actually killed Mysterio and that he was an innocent man and destined to be a great hero. But because of the world we live in where everyone is 50-50 split, we have another poster that reads, citizens to defend Spidey. So there is a group of people out there that know Spider-Man is innocent, that he's all right in the world, and this could be what ties in Daredevil into this movie, because we've heard that Daredevil is now showing up in this film, played by Charlie Cox, and if Spider-Man really needs to be defended or show up in court, uh, it would be great if Matt Murdock is his lawyer. But admittedly, though, the thing that is catching everybody's attention other than these Mysterio posters, man, is just like, why are there so many missing people posters? Now, there's really missing people posters from everything. We have little kids. We have an old lady here. We have a younger woman here. So there's a lot of people missing in Spider-Man 3. These could be, one, leftover posters from Avengers Endgame when people snapped away and they went missing. Two, these could just be regular missing posters to kind of fill out the space of the flyers. But... 
I think this has to do with the multiverse, okay? Something happens where maybe people are being pulled out of their own realities and sucked into different ones. This could explain a lot of stuff. One, how the two Spider-Men show up in our multiverse. Maybe they're disappearing from their own worlds into ours as people from our world are disappearing into theirs. Or two, this could be how mutants are introduced. They're pulled out from a universe where mutants exist and then they pop into our universe. That's really what goes on rattling in my mind to what exactly these missing posters could mean because I think they know the main thing we're going to be looking at is the Mysterio and the Citizens to Defend Spidey posters. Part of me also hopes that they don't downplay this part of the movie because I would really want a strong focus on the citizens of New York hating Spider-Man because I know that sounds weird to say, but that is the core of what Spider-Man is. He's a hero that is not loved all the time, that is criticized, that is always bashed, especially by the media and people out there. And this version of Spider-Man really hasn't had that because we live in a world where these people love superheroes. So this was a great introduction to the MCU for me to have Spider-Man kind of be a public enemy. I do like how one of these posters in particular though does show directly the face of Jake Gyllenhaal and kind of hints to me that maybe we will be seeing this version of Mysterio pop up again. There's fans out there who strongly believe Mysterio is still out there and that he'll show up once again. I wouldn't mind that. I just think if it happens, it'll be through holograms and not him actually coming back to life or faking his death. He probably just has a contingency out there. And don't forget, all those people who were helping Mysterio at the end of Far From Home, they were never arrested and we have no idea what happened to them. But really so far, these photos are great. We're only going to be getting a whole bunch more coming up on set. There's probably some that are leaking right now that I've missed and couldn't put in this video because I already posted it. But let me know what your guys' thoughts and theories are on these Spider-Man 3 set photos, specifically the Mysterio ones because... What do you think is happening there and the missing people? Do you actually think that's going to be something in the movie or something they just threw on there to fill up space on the flyer board? But that is just all the movie news we currently have going on right now, guys. I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch this video and talk some movies with me. Really means a lot. Also, don't forget to be leaving your questions on what you want me to ask the creator of Willy's Wonderland. I'll be talking to him soon and I'll be sure to bring up what you guys ask. Anything and everything, be sure to like and subscribe. But follow me on Twitter at 3CFilmReview. As always, I'm Chris. Take care.